Hey this is Vishal here from Safal Niveshak and today I am going to talk about how fortunes are made in the stock market. Now I was reading this book titled 100 to 1 in the stock market in which the author Thomas Phelps talks about how investors can grow their wealth 100 fold through buy and hold investing. I came across this book the first time in 2015 through a recommendation and then realized there was a frenzy around with people trying to get their hands onto a copy of the same. Now just going by this book's title which is 100 to 1, I thought it was a dangerous first book to be read by people just getting started in the stock market and I continue to believe the same because the title smelled of overconfidence and survivorship bias and it still does. Anyways, I found the book to be good in parts especially when the author makes the case for long term ownership of stocks and the virtues of having patience along the journey. The book starts with a story of five poor Arabs who are woken up one night by an angel. The angel says, each of you can have one wish. The first Arab asks him, give me a donkey and he is granted his wish. Now thinking how little the first Arab asked, the second one asks for 10 donkeys and gets them. Now the fourth Arab who had heard the previous three wishes asks for even more. He says, make me a king and the angel bestows him with a kingdom. Now the fifth Arab, having seen his companions ask for too little, resolves to make no such mistake. Make me an Allah, he orders the angel, and in a flash, he finds himself naked on the sand, covered with leprous sores. Now the moral of the story, as Thomas Phelps suggests in his book, is that those of us who ask little of life, get little. Those who ask much, get much, and those who ask too much, get nothing. But strange as it may seem, Phelps writes, human greed being what it is, most of us make the mistake of asking for just one donkey and few ask too much. This stands so true when it comes to investing in the stock market. An investor in general would rather sell a stock after it has gained 20 to 30 percent to avoid the regret of losing these gains. I made that mistake frequently in my initial investing days. The investor rarely thinks he has a chance to make a fortune out of his stock market investments. So the idea is to make a quick 20-30% return on a stock, sell it and get into another quick riser. Now this very investor, when he sees few others build wealth from the stock market, would soothe his ego by accusing them of having insider information or being plain lucky. He would also tell them, these success stories are now history, no one can do it now. Even when fate puts a great idea in this investor's hands, or let me say in his portfolio, he tends to throw it away. You'll never go broke taking a profit, that's the mantra he lives by. But then, as Phelps writes and later proves in his book, fortunes are made by buying right and holding on. Yet that's the secret, your broker won't tell you this. This is because his business would close down if you, if you just buy right and sit tight. You will also not hear this on business channels whose ultimate aim is to make their anchors and guests appear smart because that is what gets them the highest TRPs. But this simple secret, buy right and hold on, is there for the taking for ages. Buffett says, buy a business, don't rent stocks. And then he adds, an investor should ordinarily hold a small piece of an outstanding business with the same tenacity that an owner would exhibit if he owned all that business. If you seriously want to build wealth from the stock market over the long run, take this advice from Phelps to your heart. Buy right and hold on. I would add my bid to it thus, buy right and if the business remains good, hold on. Now Phelps advises against selling high quality businesses. He writes in his book, if you don't buy what has to be sold, you never really need to sell anything. He concludes the first chapter of his book with a powerful thought from George Baker, who said to make money in stocks, you must have the vision to see them, the courage to buy them, and the patience to hold them. The patience is the rarest of the three, but it pays off in the long run. And that's how fortunes are made in the stock market. Thank you.